Hi, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to paint a butterfly that is emerging from its cocoon. So we're going to use four colors today and you can set them out on your palette. We're going to use the yellow, the blue, the black, and the white. You have two paint brushes. You should have a flat paint brush and a round one. And a cup with some water, some type of container with a little water in it. Try to place these in a manner that you will be able to see everything that I'm doing so that you can see how I'm mixing. Now only clean your brush off if I say clean your brush off. So we tend to paint with a dirty brush and that way we don't have to do as much work. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the background first and we're going to make it a really light blue so therefore we need a lot of white a large amount of white there as you can see on the brush here and just a touch of blue not much see that a lot of white and a touch of blue I'm going to mix that and hopefully that's not too dark there we have it see that light blue color you don't have to mix it all the way. We're not blending, we're mixing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint the background. Now when you paint this background, I would like for you to paint over the edge of the butterfly's wing and his body. Say just a little in like that. See how I covered up some of that line? I'm not gonna worry about his um, antennae right there. I want to paint over a lot of the items that are here, but I don't want to completely mask them out. So that's what I'm doing in here. This is his wing. I'm painting over part of the wing. We will regain that in just a moment. So I paint it there, here, and now I have a small amount of paint left. I'm not going to worry much about that. Now I'm going to add water. So don't clean your brush off. Notice I didn't clean my brush off. Still have a lot of water. I mean paint is still on there. And now I'm going to add water here all around where I had that paint at. You'll feel it's really stiff. I'm going to add more water. The paint is on there and it's really stiff. I'm going to treat this similar to watercolor. So I'm just covering everything on the outside area. Remember I put the paint in here. I'm going to come down here. And I want to use that small amount of paint. It's okay to paint over areas of the leaves. See, the paint is so watered down until I can still see the leaf underneath there. Which is perfect. I want to make sure I get all of this paint before it dries. So the edges need to be diluted with the water really quickly before it dries. I'm adding more water. And I'm going to tilt this a little so it can run down. And I'm going to do what I call being stingy with the paint. You're stingy with the paint when you don't want to put any more paint on here and you're trying to make that little bit of paint cover a large area. And that's what I'm doing with this. Because I only want that background to be watered down. I'm going to pick up the rest of the paint that I had on this. I don't have very much, so I'm really scraping to get the rest of that paint up. And I'm put, placing it on here. It's super watered down. Super, 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 super watered down. As you can see, you can see all the lines of the butterfly underneath this paint. If, it, if you can't, water it down a little bit more at the edge so you can see all of the workings, lines for the butterfly and for the leaves. 
I'm not trying to get the brush marks out of this. I painted completely over that. It won't matter because I'm going to make those leaves green and I need blue to make those leaves green. There, I've completely covered every bit of that canvas with blue, not the main part of the butterfly. That, you can clean that brush now and set it aside. So what we're going to do now is we're, I'm going to mix yellow and blue. So I'm going to pull down a little yellow here and just a touch of blue. The blue is extremely strong. The yellow is one of those uh, milder colors. And mixing those two together, you see how it's giving me that green? And I'm going to paint the leaves. So I have a leaf here. And I'm painting one side of the leaf. One side of each of the leaves is being painted. There's a little one down in here. So I'm going to come down to this set. I'm painting the left side of each leaf. And while I'm painting it, I'm coming over the marks that I already have. That's a burnt sienna color, and it may peep out from under the color, but I don't want it to be, I don't want you to be able to see it so much. Now here up in here, right in here, there's another leaf, there's a leaf here, and there's a leaf here. I'm going to paint that leaf just like that. Now with the brush that's dirty and it has that green paint on it, I'm going to come right back into this yellow paint and I'm going to paint the other side of the leaf. Just like that. So I have two different colors. Yellow on the right, scooping up some more paint. I have yellow on the right side of the leaf, green on the left side of the leaf. Some of the leaves are small, so they run together. That's fine. With the same dirty brush, I'm only going to touch the tip into this white because I don't want to make all of my white dirty. It'll dirty up that white if you smudge it around. I only need a tip of white. So I just touch the tip in the white paint and I'm going to paint this middle section on each of the leaves white. And if you need to get just a touch more yellow, I mean, excuse me, white, do that, put it right in the middle. And now just lightly touch this, I'm just patting it to blend it. I'm not trying to do, blend both of them or all of them. I should be able to see every color that you use. All the way down to the tip if need be. And there you have it. So when you look at that up close, you can see the yellow, the green, and the white on each leaf. On this leaf, it blended a little bit more because the leaf was so small, but that's okay. I lost the tip of the leaf there, so I'm going to regain it in there. Now all I need to do is the stalk or the stem. So I still have some green left and I'm going to paint this up so you can see. I'm going to paint the stems. of this particular plant. It goes, it loops up and over. And I jumped across that leaf right there because the stem goes behind the leaf. Now I'm not using a very steady hand with this and your hand doesn't have to be steady. Just come down tracing it. 
Now in some areas it looks a little dark, but that's a light here and there. And all we have to do is go get a touch of blue and add it to different parts. And when I said touch of blue, I just barely touched it on there because see, watch this. It's not that much blue and I'm using a really light touch. I'm just dragging it along here and there so that it varies, light and dark. And it's not much, it's just a little, but enough to create a variation. Okay, now you can clean your brush off. We're going to spend the most time on the butterfly. So your brush, we wash it in water and just wipe it off on the paper towel. We don't need the excess water. So this cocoon, there's a cocoon here that it's coming out of. We're going to take a touch of black here. See that? A touch of black, a touch of blue here, right alongside it. And wipe the brush off. Don't rinse it, just wipe it off. And then we're going to scoop up some white. And that's as mixed as it needs to be. I'm not blending it. If you look at it, you can see blue, white, and black. So I'm just going to scoop that paint up. And now I'm going to paint what looks like the cocoon. And now I'm going to come back with a little black and go on the bottom of it like so. So I line the bottom of it and now I'm going to pull it up some. Just drag it up some. So it creates a different look. I want you to be able to see that that is something different than what's already there. So it's not confused with the background. That's all we need on there. If we need to come highlight it again later, we will. Now wash that brush off and wipe it, the water off. Just twirl it around on the paper towel to get the excess water off. Now all we need to do is the butterfly itself. So we'll do the body of the butterfly as it comes out of there. I'm going to take straight black with the round brush. We're going to paint just the line there. Those are his legs. It looks like his legs right there. And now paint his body. The bottom go around his head just the bottom part or the part of the body that's coming out of the cocoon there. That's the part of his body that's coming out of the cocoon. I'm going to get a little bit more of this black and do his little antenna. You see that? Just dot a little, not much, just a little. Now that's more than enough black, so I'm going to wipe the rest of that black off of my brush. I'm just twirling the brush around to wipe the excess black off. I'm going to go right into the white, right here on this side. 
and paint this in here. And as I do, notice I'm touching the black. Not a lot, but just enough to bring this color right on in. I'm going to get just a touch more white on my brush and put it in here. Smudge that black so that it's not so dark. And tap, tap the color in on the rest of it. If I leave the black like it is, it will dominate the painting. Now we can wash the color off the brush and dry the brush by twirling around on the paper towel. Make sure you keep the yellow and black separated until they dry. If not, your yellow and black will mix together and give you an army green. I'm not going to apply the black until after I get enough yellow on there. And when I do apply the black, it'll be in moderation down here on this bottom, but I don't want the two to run together yet. So I'm going to place the yellow on there. The yellow is somewhat translucent. So I'm using the yellow as the darker color. Let's run it along that bottom edge of the butterfly's wing and then run it up and around the wing like so. We'll make a demarcation between the two wings here after we paint these. The one thing I don't like about the yellow being so translucent, you can see all the markings underneath it. There's no need to water this down. You want to have enough yellow on here. Remember, you can't paint being skimpy with the paint. You have to apply paint to the painting in order to paint. Go down to the tip of that wing here. Cover all the markings that you used to sketch the butterfly. So now I'm going to take, it's okay, I didn't clean my brush either. I'm using a dirty brush, so I didn't clean the yellow off the brush. I just wiped it, which is fine. So you'll see the yellow getting into the white, but that's the only color I'm going to use with this white so it's not really contaminated. I'm going to go along this outer edge of the butterfly. And now I'm going to paint back inward. And as you can see it's causing the yellow to lighten. That's what I want. So what's happened is I've let the paint dry somewhat and I didn't want that. So let me add some more yellow, I mean, excuse me, some more white and paint inward towards the body of the butterfly. You see it creating those streaks in there? That's what I want. I don't want one solid color and now I'm going to go in on this wing so we make streaks with the white going towards the body I'm going to wipe that off and I'm going to come back in with some more yellow. We go back and forth until we get the desired effect that we want. So here I'm going to come in and create some more of that streaking effect. I'm doing a sort of, um, I'm following the shape of the wing, sort of that 
crescent or rounded shape going along the wing because I don't want it to look flat and straight and I'm using the tip here I'm using this tip of the brush and it's creating these streaking looking marks in there see that I'm going to do the same thing to this bottom wing, shrieking outward, round and outward to the end. And I'm going to going to sort of cheat. I'm gonna wash that off this time. Wash all the yellow off and dry it. And I'm going to come back with some straight white that we still have on our palette. And I'm going to accent this white that we have on there already and make some streaks in there if I can. That's what I'm going to do. See what that did there? It made a streak right into that. You gotta have enough paint on there. If you don't have enough paint on there, scoop some more paint on there so it'll make those streaks for you. And you need those streaks. See there? need those streaks. I'm gonna see if I can put a little bit more yellow or excuse me white here. On that tip. I want a little more white towards this tip area. Otherwise, it sort of reads a little bit more flat than what I want it to, so I'm adding a little extra white. I have these little markings here from the um, when I drew the sketch on. So we just added a little more white to the edge. And it looks like, uh, when I add it on at first, it looks like a solid white. So I'm just lightly tapping it now in certain areas to make sure it has that yellow on there. I want it to be a really pale yellow. And then we'll take that yellow. So I have white on the brush and I'm gonna mix it in here with the yellow. And then I'm going to come up sort of right in here on this edge. I want it to make sure how it look. Because I don't want it to be so blobbed. I don't want the white to be blobbed. Remember I said you go back and forth, back and forth. So it's more of a yellow. I don't want it to look like a big white blob there. A pale yellow, yes. So we have to let that dry, so we'll clean our brush. And dry 
dry it off. You'll need to let that dry. In the meantime, see that little tip here on this um, wing there? We want to add some white to that. because we need to go into the black. And this edge here is dry, so we can add some black there. really anxious but I have covered up all of my spots that I had here so no worries I can just make some And the circles tend to get smaller as they go out to the edge. And you want this to get good and dry and then you can make some black lines it's up to you how thick you make them or how small thin you want them to be uniform however so I'm going to make that demarcation between the wings and see that's a lost and a found line I didn't make a straight solid line on that what I am going to do is go from each of the dots I'm not going to touch the dot itself but I'm going to go just below the dot and make a line going towards the body make sure you have enough paint on that brush A little ways from it and make a curve line It's a space in between here and here. That line isn't very curvy. washing my brush off because I made what I considered a mistake right there because I made that line too straight I'm just going to go back with a wet brush and erase that just like that some of my lines are thick And I 
I have my wet brush and I am just dragging that line down some more. See that? I just made it longer. I didn't clean my brush by me dragging it with this black. It made it sort of gray. And that's okay. I can come down here extending the line. Just little drags here and there. Not a lot. Just a little. And let the eye pick it up to carry it on. Now, if these lines that I put, I made them a little gray because my paint is still wet. If they're not dark enough for me, I can just come back over them with a light touch and more black and darken them up. See that? It just darkens it up. Let it dry some and then come back and add some more black. Because when you see these butterflies, they are black and yellow. Now, I have more yellow than you normally see on the butterfly. Normally, you see a lot of black and a little yellow, but I don't want the black to be overbearing and overpowering, so that's why I did this one more yellow than black. However, I am going to take that same dirty brush, and I'm going to come out here and accent some of the edges just with the tip of the brush. See that? That looks like it needs one right there in that big empty space. And wash your brush. That's it. So we made that butterfly black and yellow. Okay, thanks for joining me. Until next time.